Hi, this is Richard C. I'm a math tutor here at Wiseant, and I'm answering a question submitted by a student. I uh, like this question because um, it illustrates a very important uh, concept that's tested in school, and it's also tested on standardized tests like SAT and ACT. So we're basically for f of x, we're given two points, 0, 10, and 2, 20. 50, and for g of x, we're given the same two points, 0, 10, 2, 50. However, we're told that uh, f is linear and g is exponential. So we'll do each one of these. So the linear, which is f of x, well, we know that we'll put this into slope-intercept form, so it's mx plus b. We, win, we know that when x is 0, y is b. So when x is 0 up here, b is 10. So we can write f of x equals mx plus 10. And all we need now is the slope. So we'll do the slope here. It's 50 minus 10 over 50 minus 10, which obviously is 1. Pretty strange stuff here, right? But that can't be right. That can't be right. Hold it, hold it. Change in y. Sorry, sorry. I don't know what... What my brain just did there, no idea what that, what how that came out of my mouth. Okay, over two minus zero. So this is forty over two, which is twenty, and so our equation is y equals twenty x plus ten. And we could fill some of these in now if we wanted to. Uh, it's fairly simple. So it's going to be 30. And you can see that in a linear, the increase is always by the same amount. That's going to be 70. It's going to be 90. So these will be equal amounts. So it's a 20. 20 gap here, 20 more here, 20 more here, 20 more here. So that's the nature of a linear relationship. Uh, so now we'll do the exponential. So most of you would know the equation for an exponential. It's a, b to the x. And we're told when x is 0 here, y is 10. So we're going to go 10 equals a, b. I'm sorry, 10 is equal to a. When x is 0, this becomes a 1. So now we can write the equation y equals 10 times b to the x. Now to figure this out, we'll use the point 2 comma 50, so 50 is equal to 10b squared. That's just using this point 2 comma 50. Okay, so 5 is going to be b squared. So b is going to be the square root of 5. So our equation here is going to be y equals 10 times 5 to the x. This would be 25, wouldn't it? Let's see, 10, 50. 10 b squared b is the square root of 5 yeah 
So it's a y equals 10 times the square root of 5 to the x power. There we go. Let's just check that. When x is 0, y is 10. When x is 2, uh, it's 5 times 10, which is 50. Good. Right, when x is 1, it's going to be 1 comma 10 root 5. When x is uh, 3, it's going to be 3 comma 10, uh, 5, 5 raised to the 3 halves, etc. Those will be the exponentials. And that's it. Um, so these will go up by the same rate. So let me just illustrate this. So we had 10 root 5 here. So it, would, it was for the exponentials, it was 10, 10 root 5. Uh, this is uh, for 0, 1. For 2, it's going to be 50. But let's rewrite that as 10 times root 5 times root 5. So you can see each time, each time it jumps, it's being multiplied by root 5. The next one would be 50 root 5. So in an exponential, it's the rate that's the same every time. The starting value is multiplied by the square root of 5 every single time. In the linear, it's the amount that goes up every single time. Every single time, this goes up by 20. We're here for the exponential. Every single time, the rate, the same rate, is applied. And that's the difference between linear and exponential relations. It's a very important concept. Uh, as I say, it gets tested a lot in school. But it's for some reason that I don't quite understand. It's a big, big deal on the standardized test. OK, so that's it for this one. I hope that was helpful to you. I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.